How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mass of Beer Reviews. Back with a little bit of hometown cooking of hopeful goodness in the form of Chilton L Brewing. This is their Certo. Uh, this be an Italian Pilsner coming in at 4.9% alcohol by volume. Uh, yeah, uh, Italian Pilsners. It's kind of a thing now. Um, it's kind of a made-up style. Um, really kind of beast off of Pivo Pills from Firestone Walker, but it really wasn't much of a thing. And and it's just kind of becoming a thing. It's more of an American thing than an Italian thing. Um, and I don't even know. I mean, I guess the origin of the beer itself does come from Italy, hence the Italian Pilsner. But for all intents and purposes, it's a dry hopped Pilsner. That's all it is. So, um, yeah, we'll see what's what on this sucker. Um, Chilton Mill is not too far away from me, only about 35 minutes, but it's in the middle of nowhere, a place called Long Valley. I don't get out there all that often, but me and the wifey, a little bit of fruit fly poopiness up in the up in the house lately. Um, anyway, um, me and the wife, we were uh, looking to take a ride today, and we had to go to a hardware store, a specific hardware store, to pick up a specific thing. I chose to go out this way, so I stopped by Chilton Mill, picked this up to see what's what. Here we go. Uh, I reviewed, I think, two beers from these guys before. I think two. Maybe just one. One was definitely their Schwarz beer, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. There might have been another one in there, so go check those out. Um, but yeah, um, you know, been trying to support as much as I can when it comes to local during the whole COVID thing. And they dropped it, it this Pilsner the other day, so it just kind of made sense as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, I mean, that looks really nice. A lot of times when... Um, I want to say small or new breweries. They're both small and new, but um, when they tend to come, off, uh, tend to produce a pilsner um, for the first time, they tend to come off a little bit more kind of malty, a little bit more dark. This is spot on, nice, crisp, clean looking, uh, soft little haze to it. That's probably just you know just an unfiltered thing going on with that. What don't mind that, especially in the dry hopped kind of pilsner, and then a nice kind of uh, half pinky finger of a white could white could be head. Definitely looks the part of a really nice, well done kind of unfiltered kind of pilsner. Let's get a nose. That smells really good. I mean, I'm not getting an overt kind of crazy over the top dry hopping, but there's definitely this nice soft kind of fruity aromatic to it Came, coming off very much skinny, like a skin of a fruit as opposed to flesh of a fruit, like a little bit of soft kind of um, uh, even like mango um, kind of cantaloupe kind of melon kind of thing going on there in combination with a little bit of soft kind of peachy fuzzness, you know, nothing too crazy, but it does have this melon thing that really kind of comes to a head for it. A soft little kind of Pilsner malt. Maybe just a dabble of a soft spiciness from the hop, too. Smells pretty damn good. Smells like a really well done, crisp, clean kind of Pilsner. Let's dive in. Cheers. That's a really good beer. That's a really good beer. I am epically surprised. Not that these guys don't make good food, um, good beer, but man, a little crisp little Pilsner is, <laughs> that's a tall loader for a lot of people to pull off and pull off well. This is really good. I mean, it's really kind of explosive when it comes to these hops. You don't really expect that base off of the nose, but um, you get that soft little bittering in there, that soft little kind of spicy, kind of uh, more herbal kind of tannic-like kind of bittering, that little bit of melon component, but when you actually take a sip, that bitterness that dry hopping really comes to a head it's not overtly aggressive um but it's definitely kind of way bigger than you expect it being now if you kind of hold it up to some of the more traditional pilsners out there like pilsner or kel definitely way more bittering than that but if you even go to some really kind of og status stuff like uh rot house pills it's almost at the same kind of bittering as rot house pills maybe just a hair more but it, it's definitely a different kind of bittering it's a dry hopping kind of bittering as opposed to a boil bittering and that just comes off as far as it's not like a, a like a, a base kind of piney bittering there's a little bit of green component to it there's something a little bit softer a little bit of, i mean for lack of a better word uncooked to the hoppiness of it so it comes off a little bit different a little bit softer while bittering and aggressive it has this kind of powdery kind of feel to it as opposed to like i always attribute like boil hops coming off as like an oil 
um, and then I, a dry hopping comes off as like a powder. I mean, it's analogies, not necessarily feels like powder or feels like oil. But that's the kind of vibe I get off of it. And that's the way this kind of comes off here. It's got a nice sweetness to it. It's not overly sweet by any stretch of the imagination. The way that bittering comes through, you still get that little bit of melon characteristic. None of that real peachiness I was talking about. It's all about kind of a soft little um, like melon vibe to it. But it really is this kind of traditional Euro hop. I, I don't know if it's Zazi or whatever kind of hops they put in there. They come off, but they come off as that bittering with a little bit of green, a little bit of herbalness to it, that little bit of softness, and a really crisp, really clean, I can't express that enough, well-made Pilsner. This beer does not suck. Yeah, I am blown away, actually. Um, like I said, it's not so much that I didn't assume they, uh, you know, Chilton would make a good beer because I've had their beers and I've enjoyed them. But this is a really hard beer to make. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of big breweries that try to make Pilsners like that that do not get this. They don't get that lightness. They don't get that cleanness. They don't get that crispness that is pretty much essential to a lager. A lot of the breweries that really kind of start dipping their toes in lager waters when they first try and start doing it. And that probably is the difference. I know these guys have been doing lagers from the get and probably well before they even opened. They tend to come off a bit heavy. They can tend to come off a little bit, like I said, oily earlier as far as hops go. It's a different kind of oily, but there's this kind of density, kind of like a rum. Like if you ever drank like Caribbean rum, it has this buttery density to it. And, and a lot of those pilsners t tend to come off as that kind of little heftier malt style that reminds me of that kind of mouthfeel when it comes to rum. That's not here. This is absolutely 1000% in crispy boy territory, and it is just absolutely fantastic. Honestly, this is amazing beer. I love this beer. I want all of it. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, it's not overly complex. It's delicate, soft. It's pretty. Um, but at the same time, it's expressive. Kind of everything I want in a beer. It's a session beer. It's under 5%. While it is aggressive enough, it's not going to weigh heavy on your palate. I'm going to stop gushing and just say this is fantastic. Let's talk about it. Is this one of the better Pilsners that I've had as of late? Yeah. It's one of the best. It's Mount Rushmore status. I love this beer. I want this beer in my life all the time. Now I have to go there all the time. Does not suck that they're not too far away. Bag availability, a little bit pricey. Let's put it that way. Um, I mean, it's COVID times. I don't have problem paying um, a upcharge when it comes to um, kind of to-go beers and stuff like that. But I got three Crowlers, all of like sub-6% beers. Like I, one was a Maybach. Uh, one was a little Pale Ale. And then this one, and I think it was for three 32-ounce crowds, it was it was 43, I want to say, 43 bucks, 43, I think that's right. So, I mean, what's that come out to? What's that, it's $14, right? 14 bucks, maybe a little bit more, yeah, a little more than 14 bucks a crowler. It's a little bit pricey when it comes to a crowler. I'm not going to poop on it too much, especially right now with breweries needing eating the dough. I have no problem paying that. But, you know, for a, you know, sub 5% Pilsner crowler, I'd like it to be a little closer to 10 than closer to 15. Let's put it that way. And leave you with, if you like what, will you like this? If you like well-made beer, if you like people pills, if you like really sunshine pills, if you like really made, really well-made, really well-done Pilsners, but you want that added extra oomph of a subtle yet impactful dry hopping this is it i mean let's put it this way you know when breweries open um you know there's a couple different angles they take at beer um mostly um in today's world when they open they definitely lean heavily into hazy ipas pastry stouts those kind of things these guys open they had the shores beer they had black ipa they had my bach they had their pale else they had their hazies and stuff like that but you could tell the person that um opened a brewery really dig dug and loves kind of traditional styles, and it shows in the beer. So, it, you know, it's kind of one of those things where there's a lot of breweries that lean into traditional styles, and that's kind of what they do without, I don't know, bringing modern kind of hop, hop uh, brewing technique to the table. And I think this is a kind of a beautiful combination of those two because you're getting a really well, well done um, fantastic Pilsner with that new school kind of dry hopping that Italian Pilsners have brought to a head. So, yeah, if you like good beer, man, this is worth checking out. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive. Want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review as much as I did. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little uh, Italian Pilsner right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.